The Great Sphinx is believed to be the guardian figure, the protector of the pyramids, and the scourge of the enemies, the Sun God. A monumental figure admired for its beauty and almost flawless design, excuse the nose, Sphinx is presumed to hold secrets that puzzle the minds of archaeologists worldwide. Is there really an ancient city beneath the Sphinx? Does the Sphinx hold the information on all life today? Or was it built for much more? Join us today as we uncover this and more on Crunch History. Secret Hall Under the Sphinx At the beginning of April 1996, the Egyptian authorities granted a one-year license to a team of Egyptian archaeologists to conduct surveys around the Sphinx and the Giza necropolis using seismic equipment and ground-penetrating radar. The team's findings were nothing less than shocking, as they were able to discover two rectangular passageways of at least 25 feet deep beneath the Sphinx's paws. They believed that those passageways led to a certain room called the Hall of Records. Many people believe that this Hall of Records contains information about the beginning of life itself. One of the main items of this repository is supposed to be the records of the ancient mythical state of Atlantis. It is difficult to say whether all this is correct or not, since further exploration of the Sphinx is far too dangerous, given that it has been slowly crumbling due to the many years of deterioration. However, this is the least of archaeologists' concerns. The Secret Temple of Abu Simbel in the month of March 1813, Swiss explorer Johann Ludwig Burckhardt was traveling north along the Nile River when he came across three objects protruding from the sand. He decided to check it, but was unable to make any further progress as it was buried way too deep in the sand, so he headed back. Fortunately, four years later, a thorough excavation revealed what the sand had hidden for years, the long-lost Abu Simbel Temple. The Abu Simbel Temple is known to contain some of the largest stone statues ever constructed in the ancient world. The ancient Egyptians built this temple in honor of their pharaoh, Ramesses the Great, and would occasionally go there to sing praises and worship him and would see him as the perfect incarnation of God. The statues in this temple are huge, as high as 64 feet and weighing many tons per statue. How the Egyptians were able to build such objects is fascinating, but the tall statues are not the only thing that makes the temple remarkable. You see, just like the Sphinx, twice every year, particularly on February 22nd and October 22nd, the rays of the sun will pass through the opening of the temple and travel down to the end, and for 20 minutes, it would strike directly upon the carved statues of the Egyptian gods and the pharaoh Ramesses II. To someone who has no clue, it may seem that these colossal stones are used simply for artistic purposes. But they are actually not. You see, colossal statues around the world, like the Maui heads that we find on Easter Island, the Sphinx in Giza, and other gigantic statues in other civilizations, serve for more than just beautification purposes. These statues all around the world are used as a mechanism of drawing down cosmic energies into the surrounding area. But the million-dollar question is, is this done all over the world for the sake of just religion or something else? The Origin of the Great Sphinx of Giza The Great Sphinx of Giza, as commonly known today, wasn't actually known to the ancient Egyptians as a sphinx. Actually, the term sphinx didn't even originate from ancient Egypt. The word can be traced back to the Greek verb sphingen, which simply translates to to bind. The Sphinx in Greek mythology was portrayed to be a woman with the body of a lion. And honestly though, there is really not much connection between the creature and the meaning of its name. But the reason the Great Sphinx of Giza adopted the name was because the creature was quite similar to that of the Greek Sphinx. The Sphinx being a mythical creature meant it had some sort of influence on both cultures. Take Greek mythology for example. The Sphinx was depicted as a monster who dished out riddles to travelers. The first riddle, although quite common now, was the cause of so many deaths, and it went like this. What is the creature that has one voice, but has four feet in the morning, two feet in the afternoon, and three feet at night? Everyone she asked this riddle failed, 
and was eliminated, except one man who was able to answer it correctly. As for the Egyptians, the Sphinx was more of a symbol than an individual entity. It was a guardian figure, the protector of the pyramids and the scourge of the enemies of Re, the sun god. It also represented the pharaoh and the pharaoh's divine power. With this in mind, it's easy to see why Thutmose IV used the Sphinx to get himself out of trouble after eliminating his elder brother. However, there's something else that sheds more light on what the Sphinx may actually be its geographical alignment. You see, twice every year, during the spring in March and the full equinox in September, the sun sets directly on the shoulder of the Sphinx. Now, many archaeologists believe that its positioning is accidental. Some believe it is purely symbolic. But ancient astronomy theorists, as well as former Minister of Antiquities Zahi Hawass, believes this may have some sort of astronomical use because of its alignment being essentially perfect. Is it just for worshipping their sun god, or did the ancient Egyptians have something else in mind entirely for placing it there? Well, let's find out. Alien Rulers Walking Among Us On display in the Ashmolean Museum of Art and Archaeology is an ancient Sumerian cuneiform text dating back at least 2000 BC. The four-sided clay document is a list of kings who lived far longer than the average human lifespan. This artifact reveals eight kings who have ruled over five cities. Now, this may not seem like anything, but when you read further, it reveals something strange, the length of their reign. One king is said to have ruled for more than 43,000 years and another for 28,000. Strangely enough, fragments of another document called the Turin Royal Canon were found in a tomb in Luxor, and it also points out that early Egyptian pharaohs lived for hundreds of years. Coincidence? Well, one document we have that says something close to these other ancient documents is the Bible. In the Bible, there was a man known as Methuselah, and he lived for 969 years. Then we have Adam, who lived for 930 years, and then we have Noah, who lived for 950. The list goes on and on. But how is it that the ancient Egyptians were able to live close to these men stated in the Bible? If we dive more into ancient Sumerian tradition, we will find instances of the arrival of a god known as Anunnaki. Anunnaki was said to be a supreme deity who could control both the fate of human kings and his fellow gods, and it is said that he came to Earth from the stars. Much like the fallen angels from the Bible, these beings were said to possess human-like features. They pleasured themselves with human interaction whenever they wanted. Weirdly enough, ancient Greece, ancient China, and countless ancient Egyptian traditions did mention gods who came down from the sky and mingled with the humans on Earth. Wow! Does this mean that there were once extraordinary beings on Earth whom the ancient Egyptians worshipped? What do you think? Is there something more to this? Tell us in the comments section below. And a bonus point to you if you can also answer the riddle of the Greek Sphinx. As always, thanks for watching Crunch History. We'll see you next time.